Okay, in this dynamics lesson, we are going to learn about Newton's first law of motion. These are the learning objectives for today. So, we are, uh, Newton's there are three laws of motion. Through observation and experiment, he proposes three laws of motion. These three laws of motion describes the relationship between the motion of the object and the forces that are on it. So, let us look at some of the terms and phrases that we are going to use in order to understand these three laws of motion. Okay, how do we represent forces? We usually represent forces by drawing straight arrow diagrams. The longer the arrow, the stronger the force. And the direction of the arrow indicates the direction of that force. So if we have these two arrow, one is uh, this shorter arrow represents a short, weaker force as compared to a, a longer arrow. So this could represent a 4 Newton and this could represent 8 Newton. So a longer arrow actually represents a stronger force. Okay, the direction of arrow will indicate which direction the force is actually acting. So this is a force that is pulling uh, the object down, or this is a force that is actually at an angle maybe uh, 35 degrees at a, at a, uh, based on the horizontal. Okay, and remember, the length of the arrow indicates how strong the force is. One point to take note, we actually do not distinguish if a force is a push or a pull. So for example, this is a push and this is a pull. But you notice that the net effect on the, this blue box is a push or a pull would all push it towards the right. Okay, so the effect of it, it a push or a pull of the same magnitude, okay, same strength and the same direction has no difference. So whether is it considered push or pull, it's no difference. So a push is the same as a pull in terms of the effect. Okay, next term we are going to understand what is net or resultant force. An object could have many forces on them at the same time. So if you add up all the forces up, uh, it is known as a net or resultant force on the object. So for simpler situation where the forces are all in the same direction, we just add up the different magnitudes. However, uh, similarly if the forces are in opposite or opposing direction, this time around we have to subtract. Using an example, you notice that one is a push and one is a pull, but remember a push or a pull doesn't uh, make much of a difference in if they are in the same direction. So a push and a pull, you just add them up and they will form one resultant force which is a longer one, which is you just add them up. Or you if they are opposing, so you have one that is pulling towards the left the other one that's pulling to a right. So remember the longer arrow indicates this. Uh, so it could be 5 Newton, this could be 3 Newton. So you just only need to shift the arrow and 5 minus away 3, so you have 2 Newton. Okay. But in this case, this is considered to be negative 2 Newton because this uh, negative indicates the direction which is left. So the end resultant force is this green arrow, which is negative 2 Newton. Okay, what about balance force? So balance force, it is possible that a net or the resultant force is equal to 0. Um, but net or resultant force equals 0 doesn't necessarily mean that there is no forces on the object. It just means that if we add up all the forces that is on the object, they, they cancel out each other completely, as this example shows. Okay, and the object, under this situation, the object is known to be subjected under balance force. So basically, if this is 5 Newton, uh, negative 5 Newton, which is left, positive 5 Newton, if you add them up, then you find that they cancel each other out. Negative 5 plus 5 is equals to 0. So the net effect is that there is no, uh, there's a balance force of on this object. So unbalanced force. Thus, unbalanced force would mean that if you add up all the forces on an object, they do not cancel out each other completely. In other words, unbalanced force implied that net force or net uh, resultant force is not equal to zero. Okay, let's look at Newton's first law of motion, which actually talks only about when the object is under the influence of balance force, which net force is equal to zero. There are two parts to it. Newton's first law of motion states that unless acted by an external force, okay, the object will remain at rest. Uh, the object at rest would remain at rest, and object in motion 
will remain in motion at the same speed and direction. The first part is easy to understand. It's just saying that if there's no net external force on the object, and if the object is at rest or not moving initially, you will just continue not to move. So just imagine that if there are two equally strong person pushing or pulling you in the opposite direction, remember net force equals zero, and if you are already stationary, not moving, because of the opposing forces, you will not be able to move. The second part is saying that if you do not have a net external force on an object, but and assuming if the object is already moving initially, it will continue to move at the same speed and direction. Uh, it implies that if there's no net force on a moving object, you will actually continue to travel at the same speed and direction forever. Is it very difficult for you to accept or understand this statement? Well, if you don't have any forces that's on object, don't all moving object naturally will come to stop if we just leave it alone? Okay, so let's us do some imagining and deeper thinking to understand this uh, part of the Newton's first law of motion. Imagine that if you push a box on the sandy ground and let go of it, you can imagine that eventually the box will come to a rest stop or rest after a certain distance. So you take note of that distance. So you realize that, of course, it, it will just go by a short distance and you'll stop. So right now, what if you repeat the same strength push on the box, but this time around the box is on a smooth icy ground? So compare the speed and the distance that the box will, is able to move between the rough sandy ground and the smooth icy ground. I'm sure you will be arrived at the conclusion that for a smooth icy ground, if you give the same push, is able to have the maintain a certain speed and eventually come to a stop uh, a longer distance. So, as I mentioned, the box on icy ground slows down less and it is able to move further, though your push is the same. But why is that so? Of course, we know that it is because there's actually less friction on the icy ground as compared to the sandy ground. So. Right now, I want you to again imagine that uh, one stage further, that what if you can find a ground that is even smoother than the icy ground? Can you predict that the distance move, the box will move along this new ground? Will it be shorter or longer distance? So, can you see that if you have the lesser the friction, you will actually have lesser in terms of slowing down the speed of the box, which will lead to further distance the box can travel. If you have lesser and lesser friction, the, the further the box will travel a further and further distance. So that is the general pattern. So the next step is that what if you can remove all the friction? Wouldn't it, that means that the box would never slow down and maintain its speed? So Newton actually understood that when we observe moving objects that will naturally slow down and come to a stop is actually not natural at all. Though the object seems to be not under the influence of any external force, uh, it is actually already opposed by the frictional force that causes it to slow down. So in other words, there's already a net force on the object. It's just only that we don't see it. So if we can remove this friction, so that the object is truly under no external force, then a moving object would have to keep on moving at the same speed and direction. Thus, this is what Newton's first law is actually describing. Let's use a simulation to help you to understand, okay, how can a moving object under the influence of balance force can keep on still moving? Okay, right now, let's look at this. We have this box, we have this person, and we have this speedometer. Okay, so I'm going to apply some forces on this object. Okay, and let's get it to move first. Okay, so as you arrive at speed. Okay, naturally you notice that the frictional force is 100 Newton. This is 200 Newton. And of course, if you have a stronger push, it will start to move this way. Okay, so one thing you notice that, of course, the speed is actually increasing. That's natural. Okay, so 
what happens if let's say if I uh, make the, the force less than 100 Newton okay can you predict what will happen okay so let's make the force less than 100 Newton and let's push and of course you notice that the speed is actually getting less okay slowing down okay but and you notice that if I go beyond 100 Newton the speed is speeding up so what makes it so that the speed is maintained and of course the logical thing is that you keep it 100 you realize that 100 Newton is opposing back 100 Newton is pushing forward and actually that maintains the speed okay so this is actually what Newton's first law is talking about if you have net force that is 0 100 subtract away 100 okay you would re your speed would remain the same so in summary Newton's first law is actually describing the situation if the net force on the object is 0 Newton the st or if the object is stationary in the first place the object would remain stationary however if the object is already moving in the first place the object would remain moving at the same direction speed and direction so it's the same speed and direction so in other words based on Newton's first law of motion if the net force on the object is equal to 0 Newton the velocity of the object remains constant for both situation okay because this is v equals 0 and this is v equals 0 if the object is moving let's say v equals to 5 meters per second it will still remain as v equals to 5 meters per second so velocity is constant actually means that acceleration equals to 0 okay that's the end of uh, this uh, lesson okay and this is the resource that I use. Thank you.